Welcome back to the Harbour Unbox News Corner. Normally this is Tim's segment, but he is out this week, reckons he's got a bit of a stomach bug. I reckon probably not enough mega mix for the young fella. Anyway, I've stepped up to the plate to deliver you guys some news. So let's see what's in the headlines this week. Okay, what have we got here? GTX 1180 rumor, GTX 1180 rumor, more GTX 1180 news, GTX 20, no, that's the same thing. 1180, 1180. GTX 1180 release date, GTX 1180 specs, and yet more GTX 1180 rumors. Okay, well, rumors aside, there does appear that there's actually very little news to report on this week, so that's going to make my job a little bit easier. I mean, I do have like three benchmark videos in the works, but that's fine, Tim. Get better, mate. Right, so for the past month, we've been getting slammed with pretty much nothing but GTX 1180 rumors. And with the focus on what Nvidia does next, AMD has seen little attention. That said, in the last few weeks, the rumors have started to bubble over and many have begun to suspect that the next generation of Radeon GPUs are just around the corner. And this has all been sparked by the apparent sell-off of Vega 56 and 64 stock, and many of the models are now showing up as discontinued. Personally though, I have to say at this point, I wasn't really expecting to see any new AMD GPUs this year. Uh, none of our contacts have mentioned anything and they all seem to be pretty convinced that nothing is happening this year. Uh, that now looks to be the case as ASRock shared some slides at the XFast Network event in Taipei detailing its graphics card strategy up till February of 2019. The slides also revealed that ASRock plans to release a new MK2 series in August based on the RX 570 and RX 580 GPUs. This new series will almost certainly feature improved cooling as the standard Phantom Gaming series is fairly underwhelming when it comes to cooling. So that being the case, it is extremely unlikely that ASRock would announce upcoming RX 570 and RX 580 graphics cards in August if AMD had any plans of releasing new GPUs this year. It now looks highly likely that we'll see new AMD GPUs about six months later in March of 2019. Now, you might have heard a story earlier this week about Intel killing off the Extreme Edition CPU family, and this story hit headlines when a former Intel engineer tweeted out the following. The Extreme Edition brand is about to get killed. What a big mistake. That tweet, though, may have been a mistake. An Intel spokesman set the record straight the very next day, giving the following statement to Tech Report. There is no change to the branding of the Intel Core Extreme Edition processor and Intel Core X series processor family. So, that's... That for now, sounds like if you want to pay way too much for a desktop CPU, you still can. No new GPU news from Nvidia, but the company has developed an impressive deep learning technique capable of automatically removing noise and artifacts from photos. Whereas recent deep learning work in this field has focused on training neural networks with clean and noisy images, Nvidia's AI can do so without ever being shown a noise-free example. The new deep learning based approach developed alongside researchers from MIT and Alto University can remove noise, artifacts and grain after only seeing two dirty samples. Using Tesla P100 GPUs, Nvidia trained the system on 50,000 images in the ImageNet validation set. It then validated the neural network on three different data sets. The results are rather impressive, especially in images corrupted with random text and photos with excessive noise. But as is to be expected, there is some loss of sharpness when using Nvidia's AI, but still, overall, very impressive stuff. Samsung has just put its fifth generation VNAND memory into mass production, so that means even faster solid state drives are on the horizon. This next generation VNAND technology offers better performance and higher yields of usable chips through improvements in manufacturing. Using over 90 layers compared to the previous generation 64, the new memory achieves nearly a 40% improvement in performance and will arrive in 32 gigabyte chip capacities. Each chip can reach speeds of up to 1.4 gigabits per second, and despite having more layers, the chips are not all that much thicker, as a nearly 20% reduction in layer thickness has been achieved. Energy efficiency remains roughly the same since Samsung has been able to run its newest generation at just 1.2 volts instead of 1.8 volts for the previous generation. Write speeds have also been improved by up to 30% and Samsung has bragged that its 5th gen VNAND can achieve the highest peak write speeds on the market with bits of data being stored in as little as 500 microseconds. Even though manufacturing processes have become extremely expensive for semiconductor components, Samsung claims productivity is up over 30%, so faster storage may not be more expensive than current generation products. 
Big news for gamers this week. CD Projekt Red says there will be a new Witcher game, but it won't be called The Witcher 4. The developer stated that the first three titles made up a solid trilogy, so any new entry won't be called The Witcher 4. They did go on to say though that this doesn't mean they'll leave The Witcher world behind. Right now, most of the gaming world has its eyes on CD Projekt Red's Cyberpunk 2077. As the behind closed doors E3 demo was in pre-alpha state, it could be years before the game arrives though. Surprisingly, the studio is working on another title at the same time and that's rumored to launch in 2021, though no details have been revealed at this time. Having sold over 33 million copies, you can understand why CD Projekt Red doesn't want to abandon the Witcher series, but it's a shame we won't be able to play as Geralt anymore. Fortnite's fifth season has officially arrived, and with it comes a host of new features, map modifications, and cosmetic goodies. Set in motion by last week's one-time Rocket event, Fortnite now includes in-game rifts. These are small blue shimmers scattered around the map. Hop in one of them and you'll suddenly drop out of the sky in a different location. They're probably going to be quite useful for sneaking up on the enemy. Season 5 also adds a new vehicle in addition to the shopping cart, and the new vehicle is the all-terrain cart, or ATK for short. Uh, this tricked out golf cart has room for your entire squad, so that's quite nice, moving all four of you around the map quite quickly. And as a fun little bonus, the roof also acts as a bounce pad. Map updates include a new desert biome, complete with a racetrack and two new locations, Paradise Palms and Lazy Lynx. As for the cosmetic stuff, well, there's an all new battle pass featuring 100 tiers of items to unlock. This season includes toys and props that can be used to play the games like basketball and golf with your friends, as well as usual stuff like outfits and whatnot. As was the case previously, the battle pass will set you back 950 V-Bucks or around $10 US. Apple has finally faced criticism for its lack of processor updates on the MacBook Pro line. Despite most of the Windows PC competitors upgrading their respective models, Apple has failed to do so. That is, until now. Apple has also had to deal with the keyboard reliability issues with the butterfly switches, and these issues have no doubt kept many would-be Apple customers from purchasing a new MacBook Pro. However, Apple is finally dealing with one of those issues with its update of the 13 and 15 inch MacBook Pro with touch bar. The 15-inch version gets the Intel 6-core 12-thread processor supporting clock speeds up to 4.8 GHz. They can be configured with as much as 32 GB of DDR4 memory, and the GPUs are of course discrete AMD Radeon Pros with 4 GB of VRAM. Then for storage, the 15-inch model can handle up to 4 TB. Pricing starts at $2,400 US, but can be as much as $6,700 US if you go all out. The 13-inch model gets quad-core Core i5 and i7 chips with turbos up to 4.5 GHz. Those CPUs are paired with integrated Intel graphics and pricing starts at $1,800 US. Apple says that the keyboards in the 2000 update contain third-generation butterfly switches. There's no indication that these were engineered to be more durable, but they are quieter. Of course, Apple insists that the keyboard reliability issues only affected a small amount of MacBook Pro users. Oh, and just quickly to round out the Apple news, on July 7th, the Apple store in Fresno, California was robbed of $27,000 US worth of merchandise. The store, which sits in the middle of the always busy Fashion Fair Mall, was open and serving customers at the time. The incident is still under investigation, but police have just released footage of the crime on Tuesday and are asking for help. The surveillance footage of the crime shows four individuals entering the store and quickly removing MacBooks, iPods, iPhones, and iPads from their displays. The crooks were not violent, but they were aggressive as they pushed people out of the way to get to the devices. The entire crime took less than 30 seconds. Google recently enabled a new security feature as part of Chrome 67 that aims to mitigate speculative execution side channel attacks like Spectra. It's good news for security, but as we've seen with other fixes, it'll cost you in terms of system resources. In short, you're looking at around a 10 to 13% increase in system memory usage. So for those of you with 16 gigabytes or more system memory, this probably won't be an issue, but for budget rigs with eight gigabytes or less, there will likely be a noticeable performance hit. As I was putting this video together, I had over a dozen tabs open and Chrome 67 was hogging four and a half gigabytes of my editing system's 32 gigabyte memory buffer. If Google's estimates are correct, the previous version would have chewed up around four gigabytes. So again, for higher end rigs like mine, probably not a big deal, but it could be a problem for budget systems. On a positive note though, with time, the Google team should be able to optimize the security feature in future versions. 
And that is going to do it for this week's News Corner. Hopefully we'll have Tim back next week, but he's got the next few days off anyway to recover. Tomorrow I have a Spectra Variant 4 benchmark that looks at the impact addressing the speculative store bypass vulnerability has on Intel's Coffee Lake CPUs. And then on Sunday, a quick look at how the Ryzen 5 2600 and Ryzen 7 2700 series stack up in games. So be sure to keep an eye out for all that content. I'm your host, Steve, and I'll catch you again soon.